grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, that grace and mercy comes from your God who is faithful, who wants all to be saved and one day will take you home to heaven. Our meditation this morning is going to be on the opening verses of chapter 40 uh, that we heard earlier from Isaiah. Uh, let us begin with a prayer. O Lord, bless us by your word, for your word is the truth. Fill us with your spirit through the power of your word, that our faith in you will grow, our assurance of your forgiveness, our ability to serve you and others as we await that wondrous and glorious day. Bless us by your word, for your word is the truth. Amen. They couldn't wait to get home. It had been years since the older generation had seen and walked through their stomping grounds. They couldn't wait. But as they heard rumors, as they heard reports about their Jerusalem, they were devastated. They didn't quite know what to think. For years, they had been in slavery in Babylon, all their family traditions and customs kind of thrown upside down, but they knew their time was ending, the 70 years that God had promised it was coming to a close, and they were going to get home. As you can imagine, they were excited, at the same time, a bit apprehensive, not quite sure what to expect because of those rumors and those reports. In Psalm 137, we hear about how God's people, they would go out to the Tigris River in Babylon, and they would lament, sing their songs of lament, how they wish they could be home. But now that they were ready to go, almost time to leave, they weren't quite sure what to expect. They didn't want to get their hopes up, only to get there and have those hopes dashed. They didn't want to be disappointed and depressed, because where else would they go? Once they were home, how would they move forward? As I was reading through Isaiah chapter 40, it took me back to Psalm 137. Uh, it made me think about how much we cherish home. Not a house, but home. Right? If there's one thing that we cannot do without in life, it's home. A place where we're surrounded with love, a, a safe place where we can go to know that people love us and they're going to help us and take care of us. How, how we cherish that sense of home. Not necessarily a place where we hang our hats, but we, where we hang our hearts. Maybe think also then about uh, what was comforting about home growing up as a kid, especially at Christmas time, uh, right? There's no place like home for the holidays. So I thought back, and I thought I'd share a couple of memories uh, that I have from growing up, thinking of Grandma's house. Uh, this isn't her house, but reminds me of it. Uh, she was a big decorator. Uh, we would go over there Christmas Eve night after, after the Christmas kids' service, and she would have a feast for about 30, even though there were seven of us. Uh, but then after that stuffed, we would run back home, and they just had a house in the back part of our property, so it was about 100 yards. My brothers and I would race home so he could be first to turn lights on the Christmas tree. And our Christmas tree was always about 10 feet tall. Uh, we had 12-foot ceilings in our old farmhouse. So it was always a race, right? Always a competition with brothers of who was going to get home first uh, to get the tree lit. Well, after being up for a little bit, uh, talk and enjoy some of Grandma's presents that we just opened, right? We're getting ready for bed. Well, we always spent a little time hovering over one of the heaters in the downstairs uh, because there was very little heat upstairs. A little bit would waft through the walls, and we had a couple of floor registers upstairs. But that's about all the heat that you got. So we tried to get as warm as we could before we ran upstairs to get in bed. Well, Christmas Day, we were at our house. Um, grandma, uh, Mom would have dinner and so forth, but kind of the highlight of Christmas Day was having permission to really dig into all the cookies and the candy and the things that Mom had been baking over the last couple of weeks. And the highlight, uh, for me at least, was the chocolate-covered peanut butter balls. And she would collect uh, the old Folger tin cans and stuff those full and they were out in the front room. They would turn off the heat in the front room. It kind of served as a refrigerator. Uh, so we'd race in there real quick, grab a couple, race back out. 
Um, but after Christmas Day came, uh, the, the chocolate-covered peanut butter balls didn't last much longer. But when I think of comfort, right, uh, the comforts of home growing up as a kid with Christmas time at least, uh, those are some of the things that I remember. But I also remember that sort of changed. Uh, I still like the chocolate-covered peanut butter balls, uh, but the presents thing and even the decorations thing isn't as important because you really come to realize what home is all about. Right? As cold as the house was, it was warm with family. Right? Obviously, love from our parents, uh, safety, uh, but also Christ right? that centered all of us on why we celebrate Christmas and what we had to look forward to. So again, when we think of the comforts of home, maybe sometimes it even changes over one's life of what is comforting to us about home. Well, going back to the Israelites, once they made their way back home after 70 years of slavery, they came to a city to some degree that they had never seen before. The Babylonians had come back while they took the Israelite slaves. They came back and ransacked the city. They destroyed the temple. They carried some of the temple furnishings back to Babylon. So again, they, these people had no idea what to expect when they got home. And the older generations, it was all new to them to a degree, sort of having to start all over again, uh, creating new memories, right, and reestablishing their homes and their customs and, and some of their traditions. As we think about what the people were looking forward to as they were concerned about what things might be like when they got back home, we come to appreciate um, the blessings that God gave to them. As they lamented, those laments were quieted by God's words of comfort, right? On their way home as they marched back, bringing God's temple furnishings back with them, knowing that they're going to be able to reestablish the temple, which was the focus of their life. Well, through all those difficult days and uh, tough times, uh, there will be the bumps and the bruises, the ups and the downs, through all those things were these words from Isaiah. Right? Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her. And notice there in verses 1 and two, verse 2, there's three things that are to give God's people comfort. That her hard service has been completed. And the point there is there was no longer a need to try and earn God's favor. There never had been a reason to do that. You can stop working to earn God's favor, because number two, your sin has been paid for. And then number three, he says, what have you received because of your sins? Double. Uh, and, and that's a beautiful gospel message. God gave them wonderful things, even though they had sinned. Double meaning not even just a little bit. Beyond their imagination, God blessed them with peace and joy and comfort in their hearts. Because he always forgave them. Every time they offered a sacrifice and repented, God forgave them. And this is the idea, this double portion of God's blessing is what he gave to them. While the Israelites were in slavery, and when they got back, the job of the priests was to review these words from Isaiah and all the prophets. Because first of all, they need to be reminded why they were slaves. They had messed up in the first place. They had rebelled against God. But even when they were slaves in Babylon, God had told them, well, this is where you are for 70 years, so you best make the best of it. Uh, and I'm going to prosper you. You're going to grow. You're going to get wealthier in slavery. Uh, trust me on that. Well, as you can imagine, some people lost hope uh, because they were still there as slaves. Other people, well, hey, this is a great life. Why do I go back? I don't have to pack up all my stuff and travel a quarter way around the world, perhaps, to get back to Israel. I'm just going to stay here and enjoy what God has given to us. Well, what God wanted them to remind them is what really home was all about, whether it being, you know, being home in their homeland. But he wanted to focus on their hearts. Right? And the idea that home is not necessarily where you hang your hat, obviously, or where you eat or you sleep. It's, home is this sense of knowing you're at peace with God. It's the faith that God puts in you. It's a sense of community gathered with other believers in this Savior Jesus. It's focusing on that coming of a Savior. Uh, it's communicating this wonderful message of comfort to the next generations, from one generation to the next. 
the people, some of the people had lost sight of that. They weren't worried about going back to Israel, the land, because everything was fine. But remember, the land of Israel was tied all the way back to Abraham, where God promised to give them this land. But that also was to point Abraham and the Israelites to the promised land of heaven. So there was a need to hear God's law, a need to be reminded why they were sent into slavery, so that the prophet's words also could comfort them and encourage them. Uh, there's hope, right? Uh, there's blessings from God, double the amount that you would ever deserve or expect. Such an important message uh, from God uh, that he would care for them and bless them and take care of them. Uh, God continued uh, to send prophets, right? And that was a job of priests. We heard about this voice, right? The purpose of the voice was to keep the Israelites ready uh, for, for their king, right? To prepare uh, for the coming of our Savior. And so we hear about John the Baptist, right? Um, and, and we hear, think of even pastors and teachers today. The voice from God, yeah, they reprimand uh, and they warn people because they fall away from God, but the voice of John the Baptist and, and other prophets and pastors, it's a voice to bring people back who have strayed away but also to strengthen the foundations of the home. And that strength came through God's promises and his blessings. And what does a voice promise? Here again is a summary. A voice of one calling, In the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain made low. The rough places, uh, the rough ground uh, become level and plain. There is the glory of God is the message from John. As we think of those words, we can kind of pick out a couple of things that John is focusing on. The idea of wilderness has this picture that our souls are a desolate spiritual wasteland where nothing grows, uh, where there is no life. There's a need for us to draw upon the water of life but notice what he says, uh, every valley be raised up. It's kind of like this idea that in your heart, there's cut through this valley of worry and fear. Right? And if we deprive ourselves of the water of life, nothing grows. And that valley deepens because of worry and fear, because we're not trusting God's word. On the other side, though, we have these mountains of pride. Right? We're God's people. And, and compared to everyone else, who's celebrating Christmas, we really know and we're really doing what we should be doing to celebrate Christmas to the point where these mountains of pride begin to block the star or the cross at the top of the tree. Those mountains, those hills need to be made low, right? Level those things down. And the final picture that we use to apply this to ourselves is this idea of rough ground and rugged places. It's kind of like the potholes of pet sins that we have or the weaknesses and the failures that we keep falling into, uh, that's no place for a king to dwell. So there's the need to repent. Prepare the royal highway. Prepare our hearts for our king through repentance. And Isaiah pointed out all the blessings that come as we turn to our God. Right? Uh, the comfort that comes to us knowing that our hearts are in his hands, that he loves us anyways, going back to verse 2. What has God said to you? Uh, your hard service is done. Right? Uh, the old James, King James, your warfare is over. No more need to battle against good and evil. Uh, no more need to try and earn God's favor. It's been done for you. Uh, the second blessing that brings us comfort Sins have been paid for. And finally, the third thing, God has given you double of what you don't deserve. He's going to give you beyond your imagination the blessings you need for your life, peace of forgiveness, joy, and comfort. As we think about the Israelites and wanting to get home, uh, because there were so many comforting things about where they grew up, Specifically, the temple, right? That was the focus of their life and their worship. 
As we think about those comforts, we obviously can think of our own homes and the comforts of home. But most importantly, it's the comfort that we have in our Savior Jesus, the home that he has made in our hearts, where he dwells. Maybe he sort of decorates our, our hearts with his peace and his joy and his comfort. Uh, he, he does all those things now that we can enjoy the comforts of God being at home in us. He does that uh, wetting our appetite for the home that we will enjoy in heaven, right? That the one day when we will enjoy the comforts of home in eternity. With those things in mind, we do well to constantly prepare ourselves. Not for Christmas, uh, for special events in our lives, but never to forget to prepare ourselves each and every day, all day long, for the coming of our Savior. It will come like a thief in the night, uh, but it will be a great and glorious day, the day when we will enjoy being home in heaven with our Savior. God's blessings as you continue to prepare through repentance. It's humble, uh, sincere repentance, but it's joyful repentance because you know your Savior, Jesus. God uh, bless you through your preparations for the coming of your King. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, the comfort that comes from God through his word, which surpasses our human understanding, will keep and guard your hearts through faith in Jesus.